All right, here we go. Um, well, first things, this is really five, six, and seven practice. But uh, number one, let's see, find the extreme values of the function where they occur. Use the first or second derivative test. Uh, so find extreme values. Those happen at critical points. So we have to find the critical points, which is where the first derivative is zero. So use the quotient rule, bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. And then simplifying, we get 8x squared plus 8 minus 16x squared all over x squared plus 1 squared, which is 8 minus 8x squared all over x squared plus 1 squared. And we want to know when is that zero or undefined. And notice this is never undefined because x squared is always positive. And so, or zero, and so x squared plus one is always going to be greater than zero. Excuse me, so that's the denominator is never zero. So we just have to worry about when the when this is zero. Well that happens when the numerator is zero. So when eight minus eight x squared equals zero or when 8x squared equals 8. x squared is 1, so x is plus or minus 1. So those are my critical points. So now the question is, is are those the maxes, mins, or neither? You can use, I said, the first or second derivative test. Um, I believe later on I gave the second derivative test problem. Yeah, second derivative later, so we we'll use a first derivative test on this one. So on the AP test, this little chart here is non-existent. So this is solely for you to figure this out. So I've got numbers less than negative one. What is y prime? Not y, but y prime. Well, the denominator is always positive, so I was worried about the numerator. So pick a number like negative two. Eight minus eight times four is negative. Pick a number between these two, like 0, 8 minus 0, y prime is positive. And bigger than 1, like 2, 8 minus 8 times 4 is negative. So here the function is increasing. Or, I'm sorry, I'm saying one thing and writing another, or, or looking at one letter to the other. Negative, y prime is negative, so it's decreasing, then it's increasing, and then it's decreasing. So there's going to be a minimum and a maximum here. So since y prime changes from negative to positive, oops, at x equals negative 1, negative 1 comma whatever the y value is, which we'll find out in a minute is a relative minimum and since y prime changes from positive to negative at x equal 1, 1 something is a relative max. So how do I find the y values? Plug them into the original equation. So 8 times negative 1 is negative 8 over 2, so negative 4. And then plug in 1, 8, positive 8 over 2 is 4. So there we go. Number 2, intervals where it's concave up. Concavity is, concave up is where the second derivative is positive. So y prime is 3x squared minus 6x minus 9 second derivative is 6x minus 6 and it's going to change from second derivative is going to change from being positive to negative when it's zero okay so that happens when 6x equals 6 or x equals 1 so I know that at 1 that's when y double prime is zero uh, that's actually a candidate for an inflection point 
There's an inflection point, which you'll see down here is when it changes sign. But to the left of zero, what do we know about y double prime? Well, if it's negative one, negative six minus six is negative. So it's concave down. Positive y, you know, bigger than zero, greater than zero, it's concave up. So it's concave up. When uh, oops. Um, well, actually, let's, say, let's write it like this. Concave up on 0 to infinity. Okay, and then the last one on this video. We'll do find the points of inflection. Well, like I said before, that's when the second derivative is 0 and um, it changes concavity. So y prime is 3x squared plus 6x minus 1, and then y double prime is 6x plus 6 equals 0. So x is negative 1. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the dishes in the background. <laughs> um, so we got negative 1. And what's happening to y double prime to the left of negative 1? Plug in negative 2. That makes y double prime negative. Concave down. Y double prime for numbers bigger than negative one, like zero. Positive. Concave up. Okay. So since um, y double prime at negative one equals zero, and y double prime changes sine at x equal negative one. Oops. X equal negative one um, is well. It's not right like that. Since it asks for the point of inflection, negative one comma whatever is a point of inflection, and what is negative one or the y value? It's going to be let's see negative one plus three is. 2 plus 1 is 3 minus 24 is negative 21. Okay, so we did that mental math right. So there you go for 1, 2, and 3. We'll do the next page on the next video.